Hey guys, so we're looking at 2.3 now. So 2.3 is a um, data handling question and there's some exchange rate um, questions in here as well. Okay. So this table four in Annex C shows the ranking for a sample of 11 countries according to the mean fuel price per gallon in Russian ruble. Remember that the word mean means average, right? So I've just written that there for us. Then it says the affordability of a gallon of fuel as a percentage of the mean daily wage in each country and the percentage mean income spent on fuel. Okay, it says use Annex to C to answer the questions that follow. Let's just quickly look at Annex to C because this is a little bit confusing to understand. So Annex to C shows three things. Okay, it shows the mean fuel price. So this is basically saying how much does it cost for a gallon of fuel in each of these countries in Russian ruble? So we can see in Venezuela, it's cheaper than in China, right? And all the rankings here are from most affordable, it's basically most affordable, and then as you go lower in the rankings, is less affordable. So we can see here in Italy, it's much less affordable. In this second grouping, we have gallon cost as a percentage of the mean daily wage, okay? So it basically says that one gallon only costs 0.07% of the mean daily wage in Venezuela. Again, the ranking is based on affordability. This last column that we have here is the mean income spent on fuel. Okay, so it's saying what percentage of income is spent on fuel in each of these countries? So we see that it's quite a lot in South Africa, but not much in Venezuela. Again, the ranking is done on affordability. Let's now go to our questions. 2.3.1 says identify the country that is the mean of the percentage is the median sorry of the percentage mean income spent on fuel right so we know that median means middle right and in order to find the middle we have to order the data from smallest to biggest okay so let's go look over here so we're sitting in this column because we're talking about the mean income spent on fuel okay and we're going to find what is the middle so we go one two three Four, five, the middle is India, right? And that is Q2. So I just wrote on my page there, India. So India is the median of that specific data set. Then 2.3.2 says, Deter determine the interquartile range of the mean income spent on fuel. So again, we're still in that same column, except now we, do, we are finding the interquartile range. So the interquartile range, right, is... I've written it over here, Q3 minus Q1, okay? So now we found Q2, right? And we must remember that Q1 is the median of the data below the actual median, right? So we have five data points there. If we count in, our median is Norway. Q3, similarly, is just the median of the data above the actual median. Again, we count in and we see that Canada is our Q3, okay? So we're going to write here Q3 minus Q1. We say that's the value for Canada minus the value for uh, Norway. Okay, and the interquartile range is 2.34. Okay, so that again was just testing your understanding and your ability to find these different measures. Okay, let's now go to 2.3.3. So this is a application question. It says, give one valid reason why the sample is considered unbiased with respect to the percentage mean income spent on fuel. Okay, the reason it's unbiased is because it's just a random sample of countries, right? Just a random sample of countries. Um, when something's biased, it means that you've specifically chosen them. But yeah, it doesn't look like they're specifically chosen, right? It's just countries all over the world. So you can go to the memo and see the variety of answers they give you. But the one that I wrote over here is I just said, it's a random selection of countries. There's developing and developed, right? Developing countries like South Africa and developed countries like Canada. Okay. So now let's go on to 2.3.4. Now this is where the math starts getting a little bit tricky, right? But let's see what we can do. Okay. It says determine the difference in Russian ruble, so we know that we don't have to do any exchange rate calculations at this point, between the mean daily wage in India and South Africa, okay? So we know, right, that a gallon costs this much in India, and that much is 93.76% of the mean daily wage. Similarly, for South Africa, this amount is 26.2% of the mean daily wage in South Africa, okay? So what we're going to do is let's start with India and then we'll move on to South Africa. 
So we say India, we say the mean daily wage times by that percentage, right? So times by the percentage that a gallon takes up of the mean daily wage equals the expense of the of the each gallon, right? In that country, right? That's what it's saying. It's saying if I take the mean daily wage and multiply it by this percentage, it should give me that, okay? So then what we have to do is we have to get the mean daily wage by itself, right? So I've called this the mean daily wage. So because it's multiplied on that side, now we bring it down and we divide it, right? And we should be able to get our answer. Remember to put in your percentage sign here. Okay, it makes a difference. So the mean daily wage, right, in Russian rubles, I'm just going to say in, in RR, is, is 252.25. Okay, now we would expect it to be higher than the amount, right, that is spent on a gallon of fuel, right? And it is, because remember, a gallon of fuel is only 93.76%. And this is 100% of the mean daily wage. Okay, let's just reiterate what we did there, right, and do it for South Africa. So for South Africa, the mean daily wage times by 26.2%, right, 26.2% equals 237.35 Russian ruble, okay? Now we want to get rid of this 26.2, so what I said is you divide through both sides by that percentage like we did above, cancels on this side, which just gives us the mean daily wage, okay, because that's dividing by itself. Anything divided by itself is 1. Then we put this into our calculator, 237.35 divided by the percentage, and it gives us 905.92, right? So now we've got that, but have we answered the question? What did the question say? the difference between the mean daily wage. So the difference between the mean daily wage is going to be South Africa minus India, which is 905.92 minus 252.25, because that's going to be the difference. Okay, put that into your calculator. Oh, let me not put that in wrong. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Back on track. Um, 0.25. And what is the difference? It is 653.67 Russian ruble. You probably should write out Russian ruble, not just RR, because I don't think that's the official um, symbolism to use, but you know what I mean. Okay, so that is the answer there. It's a little bit tricky, but it's one of those things that try reason out what information has been given. Okay, let's now go to the last question of this question. Again, a big question but not impossible, okay? Let's see what we can do, okay? So it says, a learner solution for calculating the range in rand per gallon of the mean fuel price, okay? The mean fuel price, so it's important, we're sitting here, right? This is the mean fuel price, okay? It's shown below. So they said the range, right? They basically said the biggest minus the smallest, we'll have to go check if that's right, is this mini Russian ruble. Okay, then we, they say, okay, let's convert that into euro and then let's convert that euro to rand. Okay, so let's do this calculation and see whether we get the same answer. Okay, and remember at the end of this, we have to either say the student is correct or incorrect. You can't just do the calculations and call it a day. You have to comment on it. Okay, so firstly, let's find the range. Okay, so we are looking at the mean fuel price. So we're sitting here. Okay, so the range is the largest minus the smallest. So I see Norway as the largest and I see Venezuela as the smallest. So let's put that in. So we're going to say Norway minus Venezuela. So we're going to say 425.52 minus 21.44. Okay, so let's put that into our calculator. Okay, and I get the range as 404.08 Russian ruble. Okay, let's see if we're agreeing with the students so far. So, so far we agree with them because they got the same range as we got. Okay, but now we're getting to the tricky little exchange rates. So, now we want to go from Russian ruble to euro. Okay, so we see that one Russian ruble 
gives us 0 0.06 euro. Okay, so we're going to say one ruble gives us 0 0.016 euro. Okay, so now we know that we have 404.08 rubles, right? So we've multiplied that side by 404.08, okay? So whatever we've done to that side, we must do to this side to get the euro, okay? So we're going to take that amount that we calculated and multiply it by the euro. So I'm getting 6.46528 euro, okay? So that's what I'm getting in euro. That does make sense, right? And let's think about why it makes sense. Because remember, one Russian ruble doesn't even give us one euro. So we would expect to have fewer euros than we would Russian ruble. And we do, right? 6.46528 is less than 404. Okay, so it kind of makes sense. Okay, let's now go because now we, we're starting to disagree with the student, right? Because they got a very different answer to us. They got way more euros than they did Russian ruble and we got it the other way around. So we're thinking uh, the student has, has not um, actually done perfect calculations here. Let's now go from euro to rand. Okay, so now we have... Um, sorry, I'm going to put it over here. So I'm going to say euro to rand. So now one rand equals 0 0.07 euro. Okay, one rand equals 0 0.07 euro. But that's a little bit tricky for us now to use. So let's change it into a ratio that is one to something rand. Okay, so what do we have to do to the 0 0.07 to get to 1? Well, we can divide 1 by 0 0.07, and that tells us what we need to multiply it for, by. So we've multiplied the side by 14.28. What we do to the one side, we have to do to the other. So this side is going to equal 1, 4, 0.285, like that. Okay, keep this in your calculator because we're going to need it later. So basically what we're saying is we're saying one euro, instead of saying 0 0.07 gives us one rand, we're saying, well, one euro actually gives us 14.285 something something rand. So we see that one euro gives us more than one rand, right? So now when we put in the 6.46528, right, we know that we've multiplied this by the 6.46528, right, to get to our euros. So if we've done that on that side, let's multiply it on this side, right? So we say the 14.285 water, 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 times by 6.46528. And that tells us how many rands we will have, okay? So the number of rands we're going to have is 92.36, okay? We would expect there to be more rands than euros because... We see that one euro gives us 14.28 rands. So if we have 6.46528 to eight euros, we would expect to have more rands. Okay. So our answer here is then 92.36. Okay. So that is actually what um, the, the range is in rands. Okay. But this student said it was this massive number over here. So we say, mm, no, learner is incorrect. Okay, so remember, once you do the maths, always state whether the, the scenario that's given or the person that's given a, 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 specific, a specific solution, whether it is correct or incorrect. Okay, so that's the end of this question. Yes, a very tricky question, but a really good question to practice. Okay, let's now move on to question three.